Have you ever seen the Power Rangers episode where he uh, skips to the end of the magic spell book and uh, without learning the spells in between and it all goes uh, a bit wrong? Well, if you haven't seen the last tutorial, then um, same thing's going to happen here because this follows directly on from the last one. Um, we've basically completely mapped our sprite. Um, well, I say completely, that's not quite. We've got a draw, move, constructor, destructor, and we can make one of these. And we had these public X and Y values. And we've mapped all of that, and we can read the X and Y value. But um, with one thing left, and we need to be able to write the X and Y value as well. So if we look at our script down here, this is just a complete copy of the tutorial from last time. There's all our code. There's our code that's... Um, we read the sprite x value and we put it in a temporary. Um, but this time what we really want to do is we want to be able to write, let's just write the y value. So if I say um, sprite y equals 10, I want to be able to write that. So let's give that a go, see what it does. And it has attempt to index sprite meta table value global sprite online. Five, so it wasn't able to do it. I think that's one, two, three, four, five. There it is. Couldn't do it. So it's a miserable failure. And uh, the reason for that is uh, we haven't told it how to access that. And this isn't going to be too difficult, I think, because what we're going to do is we're going to use a new meta method that we haven't used before, which is new index instead of index. The, the kind of like a paired thing index and new index. Index is when you're accessing something underscore underscore index and underscore underscore new index uh, is when you're writing something. So in our sprite meta table, this is the, this is a meta table that's attached to our user datum. We just need to add on, I'll just copy that. We need to add on the new index. There it is. And I'll, I'll map it to a function called sprite new index. So yeah, so that's going to get invoked when we try and act, well when we try and write to that y value or any other value, um, it's going to invoke this meta method, and I'll, I'll have a new method here and I'll call it sprite new index and I'll pop it up here with the other ones. I'll just take it, to start with. I'll just take a copy of, um, I'll take a copy of our index, the read one, because it's almost what we want, almost, um, and we'll call it sprite new index. So this is going to get invoked. Yeah, when we're trying to write that y value. And this one is, like I said, very similar, but not quite. It's going to leave us three things on the stack. Um, the user data that that we are accessing, the user datum. Um, the index that we're going to access in that user datum. And the last value, uh, which is at minus one, is um, the value we want to set. And I can't uh, say is number or is anything here because I mean it's possible it's a string or a number or anything so I'm not going to assert that it's anything in particular there although in our case it's it's just a number but we might change that later on so um, let's get the sprite and the index back again this, the uh, the user data sprites at that address the um, what have we got the index is at minus two um, and we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to do our string compare. So if the index is x, we're going to, instead of pushing um, pushing that number, um, pushing that number from sprite onto the stack, we're going to get the number off the stack and get the value and put it into x. So we do that with Lua to number. And it's negative one because it's been it's the value that's been left on the stack. And I'm not returning anything here at the moment. I'll do the same thing with y. Same thing with y. And then it gets interesting because what do we do if the value you're trying to write to doesn't exist in the native object? So there's an interesting one because what we did on the index one, you can see the old code here, is that we got a value from our sprite table, which we're storing some of our methods in, like move and draw and stuff. But the problem with that is, if we tried to write back to that table um, to store a value that didn't exist, well, there's only one of these. So every single sprite would write to the same table. Now, 
keep in mind that that might be what you want. Maybe you maybe that's something you want to do in your program. Um, maybe a more common thing is possibly just to assert because you don't want anybody to write values that didn't exist in your native object. Um, so, well, I'll just completely assert there. Um, don't want you to write to my native object. So that that might be that might be what we want you to do in that case. Um, but probably in the next tutorial, I'll cover that you can actually handle this case as well uh, and allow you know other values to be pushed onto this. Um, you know additional values to be pushed on in in as well as the native ones. But currently. If you just want like, oh, I don't want anybody to write. If somebody types Y, Y instead of Y, then this will assert and they'll say, oh, no, you can't do that. You might want to not so or do something better than that. But in this case, that that might be fine. So we'll leave it like that for now. We're not returning anything on the stack, remember, because we just, um, we're just we simply writing values into here. So that should be our new index, um, I think. Um, we're using it there. Um, let's just build that. Uh, oh, we can't convert. It wants these as ints. So I'm gonna. I, I'm. I'm happy with those being turned into ints. So I'm gonna cast them. And let's have a look. So nothing's crashed. Um, it says x equals six, y equals seven. Is that correct? Uh, well, I wrote it to ten. Oh, but I drew it before I wrote the value. So um, I drew the value and then I changed it and then I didn't draw it again. So let's draw it again down here. Let's build that. And there we go. So we successfully set our Y value to um, to 10 and uh, X has just stayed the way it is. And that is pretty good. So we can even do things like set the Y value to the X value now. So that, that will invoke the index meta method and that will invoke the new index meta method and they'll quite happily work together. So the X and Y value, they're the same now. The X is six and Y is six. So this is pretty good. I think I think we've pretty much fully mapped this very trivial and contrived class. We fully mapped it into Lua and we can, we can read and write these public values that we've put in. Uh, we can call our functions and we can construct and destruct one. So that is pretty good. And yeah, this is probably isn't the best implementation in the world. I'm doing these string compares and some other things. But I think the point here is, is that what I'm doing is working and it's completely working across this whole class. So I've, I've got a working implementation. And, and even if it's a bit crappy, um, you have to remember that, that the first implementation of something is usually a bit crappy. So... Uh, this may be perfect, this may be terrible, but the good part is is that this works and it's a good starting point. So um, I think next time what we will do is uh, let's assume that you, you do want to write some other values to this object and we can handle this case as well. Uh, so we can even extend the script so it, it goes further than the, the native version where say we've only mapped an X and a Y, but say the scriptor wanted to put a Z on here as well. Uh, well, we can make it so they can do that because we we can do that in a dynamic language. We can just add stuff to each object. So we'll probably do that next time. But for now, we are, well, we are doing magic spells, let's face it. <laughs>